challenge and I think having done a number of films like this that is almost always uh, the central challenge um, I mean less so with a band like the Stones obviously who everybody knows about but um, with this I think the decision that I made was in a way to almost uh, try to convince myself that I was inventing them as I was making the film that it was kind of like a drama or I was creating some kind of fictional universe uh, and make sure the film just felt like you know, a, a, a really tightly crafted uh, dramatic film with all the ups and downs, peaks and valleys, the rhythms, the vibe, the look, everything um, that would satisfy me. It's like as long as I was getting off on it and I felt like <laughs> this is going to be a, an awesome movie, like I just had to have that kind of gut instinct about it, I figured we would be able to be okay with both sides of that spectrum. You know what I mean? And obviously, coming from my perspective, it, it, it was an advantage for the non-fan to kind of be their guide into this uh, amazing world, so. So Yoshiki, you, you granted Stephen a, a lot of access, you know, and you really put it out there. Was there any, um, did you feel any hesitation on making this film? Because there's a lot, there's moments of levity, but there's also a lot of, there's a lot of heavy moments as well. Yes, at the beginning, I didn't want to make this film at all. Um, my agent approached me you know, to create this documentary film about several years ago. I said, I can't do this, it's too painful. Um, then eventually, um, people kind of convinced me that once I decided to open the door, I just decided to open the door all the way. So I gave Stephen uh, access to every, any, any footage of action plan. Is it hard for you to watch parts of this film? Yes, still hard to 
I know. I, I wanted to watch it still. How do you feel now that it's out there, though? Is it cathartic in any way? Um, I think it's good. I mean, the process of making this film is kind of therapeutic as well. Um, you know, there's a thing called Last Life before Aban broke up. We did a one show, Tokyo Dome. Um, it's, um, um, it's about three hours show or something like that. Um, then after Last Life, at that time we had the Universal Music, they asked me to release the DVD. Then I said I can't because I can't even watch the first five minutes without breaking any broken tears. Um, so it took almost two years or something, or even more, to edit. I mean, I couldn't edit, so I had an editor edit that one. So if we, I cannot watch that last live five minutes, how could I watch entire kind of like a story of Japan? So it was um, pretty hard. Why do you think it was, this is a question for either of you, why do you think it was um, important that this story be told and be told now? Um, why is it important to be told now? Well, um, and this was actually kind of surprised me, it kind of caught me off guard actually after the film was made. And this is something you've said a lot that I wasn't really too clued in on is that part of the motivation for you was that you felt this film could actually help people save people, save lives. It, it just had a real a core of inspiration to it. And I was just scrambling around trying to tell a story and get all the pieces in the right place. Um, but it really was kind of after the fact, it was actually our second screening uh, at Sundance, and a woman came up to me who worked with uh, troubled youth and kids who were at risk for suicide, and you know, really it just s said she thought the film could be a tool that she could use to, you know, teach them or you know help in like some kind of therapeutic way to uh, show them you know through creativity uh, a path out uh, and so for that reason alone and I've seen this effect um, as you meet more and more fans uh, they really do adhere to this kind of almost it's it's almost a slightly religious uh, attachment to this band but you see why because there really is uh, so It's like um, the, our fan gave us like a um, second chance. Um, that's that's why I'm I'm here. Um, Yaksha Pan is still here. So um, I think we're gonna try one more time, or tour, or more. We're gonna keep going because you know. Yeah, we didn't even, even think about this when we broke up. And then, Toshi got brainwashed, then, <laughs> you know, then he passed away, and then there are no way, uh, you know, we, we can reunite the band, but because of our fan, fan, yeah, because our fan, we are here, also this film is, film is, you know, here because of our fan. Which is amazing. Um, Gene Simmons, who I know you're friends with, and actually, can you tell the story about about Kiss? Gene Simmons is in the film. He's been, and I know he played with you in Japan. But it's Kiss that got you first into into rock, right? Um, how, and that was your first concert. Yes. Um, so yeah, uh, um, you know, I lost my father, and I was very really angry and looking for something. But I was still listening to listening to the um, classical music. So every month, you know, um, my Father, when he used to live, uh, he gave me, he bought me the, you know, um, vinyl, Beethoven or Chopin or Schubert. So the day after he, uh, my father passed away, my mother did the same thing for me. So one day I went to the record shop. He doesn't know, buy another Beethoven Symphony Number no. Nine or something like that. <laughs> I passed the section. There's a strange looking. People's, you know, album cover. <laughs> the last record, uh, clerk, what is this? <laughs> Say it's a Banco case. Can you play it for me? There was like a, a song called Love Gun. I was like, oh, this is cool. 
der, der, ich sitze bei Beethoven und end up bei Kiss up, Kiss Record. <laughs> then, then, you know, um, right after Kiss just came to Japan, I asked my mother, I want to go to see the concert. She didn't know what she was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> so she took me and my brother. I think my brother was five years old, so. <laughs> <laughs> then she was wearing kimono, she bought, she bought sushi for us. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> then we went to Budokan, the Japanese place, and then she, this fire started, and then I started screaming, and everything. She was like, well, <laughs> what, what kind of place did you, you know? <laughs> 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 then, so. Then, anyway, I just came back from Tokyo uh, a few days ago. Um, actually, I, I had a uh, festival I organized called the Shiro Japan Summit. Then I invited Jin Shimans, and then we played a uh, show together. Um, it's so strange, but so cool, you know, the, 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 part, the, pit, the band who came in to rock, now we are performing together. That's like, you know what, if you, you know, Dream can come true if you just, you know, keep believing. <laughs> That's awesome. And what's cool is actually probably what KISS did for you, X Japan did, for a lot of the bands that played at that festival who look up to you, so that's really cool. Um, <laughs> After watching We Are X documentary, we're gonna go eat food. But we're passing by the Tokyo. Hi! Hi! It's possible. Last time, I wasn't able to put her in the video because I was too. too <laughs> Why do that? Do that. It's gonna no appear in my YouTube. We weren't able to film her because we were too. Freaking out, yeah, a lot. I think it's cool. Hey, this is Jen, and then behind her is her mural. What? Her beautiful, beautiful <laughs> mural. Look at that rookie. Oh, look at that eye. Die. I got that one in Japan. And I got that one in Japan. When her I goodies. When her I goodies. Dim, when I bought them, and then I had like all kinds of stuff in that. Like Dang. all those posters. I'm with like a hardcore VK person right here. Fun. Here. Look at this. Like everywhere you look, there's something. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of kitty shit. So and I then there's it. like, oh, it's covered. This X Japan poster, and then the back butler. Beddings. Yeah, she has a gazette thingy again over there, and then Meiji Bray and Miyavi. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Oh, it's falling off though. Cause of the show me your, show me your flag. My what? Oh, my flag. Yes. How come I don't have one? <laughs> that would be perfect oh, for my apartment. Me what I got it for you at Misha. 
Next time, tell me if there's a me shop thingy. Yeah. I almost so bad luck at buying things. Um, well, cause I I got it after the world tour. Um, people started um buying it, and I was like, I want that. I want that, and I needed it in my collection.